If you've seen some of my prior Dead or Alive videos, then you'd know that I'm a fan of the series. It has an interesting reputation among fighting game fans, to say the least, but I've always thought that Dead or Alive looks, plays, and sounds great. Plus, no other fighting game lets me cosplay as Gold Mighton and send someone flying off a cliff. From the Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, PS2, Xbox, and beyond, Dead or Alive has made plenty of appearances on consoles throughout the many generations of them, but the series never found its footing on PC fully. While Dead or Alive 5 and 6 appear on PC with their small fortunes worth of DLC, other games in the series were only released on consoles and in arcades, meaning there's no official way to play these titles on PC. After deciding to start playing DOA with a friend of mine, he linked me to a website called Free Step Dodge, a site dedicated to all things Dead or Alive, and in one of the many threads on the site's message boards, it contained information about the following Dead or Alive game. After Dead or Alive Ultimate, which contained a remake of DOA 2, released for the Xbox in 2004 in North America and Japan, and in 2005 in Europe, Tecmo and fellow game company Levo Studio decided to release a PC version of the game, complete with online play and a lobby system not unlike the ones found in games like Dragon Ball Fighters. Released in open beta in 2008 for the Chinese market, Dead or Alive Online was the first entry into the series to release on PC, but unfortunately it didn't last for very long. The game's servers were closed for good on January 9th, 2010, and its final update released on August 24th, 2009. I thought that this was just an obscure and inaccessible version of Dead or Alive, but thanks to the series' passionate fanbase, DOA Online can be played online even today on modern PCs. With that out of the way, let's dive into DOA Online and discover how it was made, how it plays, what features it has to offer, and how it functions today, over a decade since it launched. Honestly, not much is known about the development of the history of Dead or Alive Online. I mentioned the developer of the game earlier though, Levo Studio, and after trying to research them, I've come up with very little evidence as to who they could be, but I'm going to speculate anyway. I found during my research that in 2009 they worked on an online game based on the manga Bastard, called Bastard Online, and this game, like DOA Online, was published by Tecmo. I can't find any screenshots or media coverage about the game, so I believe that Levo was either a very small studio that Tecmo collaborated with for their online games, or they were a small, internal division within Tecmo itself that assisted with their online titles. First announced at the 2008 Tokyo Game Show, Dead or Alive Online's release later that year was meant to coincide with the 2008 Beijing Olympics, which gave us simultaneously the best and also worst video game of all time. Many trailers were released for the game, including this cool live-action one with a real Kasumi and Ayane. There was also this press conference held to promote the game, but due to how obscure and old this footage is, I can't figure out where this is from exactly. Translating the video title with the best translator of all time, Google Translate, leads us to a broken sentence, but there are still some useful nuggets of information here. Life and Death Fight Online Press Conference is obviously a literal translation of Dead or Alive Online Press Conference, but the following phrases caught my interest. Look, just as a word of warning, I could be completely wrong here, but I went down this rabbit hole for the better part of an afternoon and I just wanted to get my thoughts out there. Kai Shu Zen, I probably pronounced that wrong, I apologize, is the name of a Taiwanese actress and model, and I believe that she is the Kasumi cosplayer in the video. Chen Shi Shuan is harder to research, but she does have a very small IMDb page. Due to her name also being Chinese, and, you know, being in the title of the video, I believe that she could be the Ayane cosplayer. The final part of the title translates to Bahamut GNN, and looking this phrase up returns what I believe to be a Chinese gaming website. The logo at the top of this page is also the same logo found in the beginning of the press conference video with the cosplayers, indicating that these two are closely linked. Again, I could be wrong about all of this, but trying to find who these people are to satiate my own weird curiosity would be an important part of the video, I felt. Anyway, let's move on. I also found this image of some models promoting the game at an event called China Joy 2007, and an article from IGN covering the event gives us the following information. One of the more interesting tidbits to come out of the show was an interview with one of the Japanese developers involved in DOA Online. While early promo footage of the game had people believing the title would use the Super Deformed style, or Chibi, for characters, he explained that the game would in fact make use of both, the traditional DOA art style, as well as the SD, known as Q-Style here in China one. The latter would be used when players are engaged in the community aspects of the title, i.e. chatting and not fighting, while reverting to the former once a bout starts. DOA has always straddled the fine line between bad taste, often meandering a little further than it probably should. 
While breast physics, racy costumes, and panty shots have long been a hallmark of the series, it's something that may not go down well locally given the government's low tolerance for sex and violence in video games. Though the team reiterated that they are considering what options would best satisfy players and the government. Dead or Alive Online's gameplay has two parts, and I'll cover both. There's the fighting game, and then there's literally everything else. Let's cover the fighting first. As DOA Online is essentially Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate, it features that game's character roster, stages, gameplay mechanics, balance, etc. And in typical Dead or Alive fashion, attacks are categorized into highs, mids, and lows, and you can input attack strings to perform some devastating looking combos. Or, you can use the throw button and its many button combinations to perform some insane grapples. DOA also has a block button, and you can use this to not only block high and low, but also to perform holds. By inputting a direction, usually back or forward, and then the block button when an enemy is striking you, you can catch their attack and turn it against them. You can also do this in the middle of combos, and the system rewards reads and reactions as a result. If your opponent knows you're going to go for a hold, however, they can simply not press anything and end their attack string, leaving you open for a big counter hit. This is the basis of Dead or Alive's combat system, and while performing combos and throws are very easy and almost button mash friendly at lower levels, the hold system prevents the game from turning into a pure button masher, and it's pretty well thought out I feel. If you try and throw out predictable and repetitive strings against an experienced opponent, you're going to eat a big punish. The game also has 15 playable characters, from series mainstays like Kasumi and Ryu Hayabusa, to newcomers like Ayn, the game has a varied roster with many different looking characters and fighting styles. Every character operates under the same button layout and control scheme, but their moves, combos, and throws are all completely different, meaning that while every character is easy to pick up and play, they are very difficult to truly master. DOA Online also has a training mode that is home to a complete suite of training materials, and the game even has sample combos for you to learn. If you've played or at least know about Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate, then you know about the gameplay of DOA Online, but there do exist some changes to the game's stages for example. Thanks to a mutual contact, I was able to get in touch with Ponton, the owner and administrator of the Free Step Dodge website, and he was nice enough to write me a list of stage differences between DOA2U and DOA Online. Now, let's move into the online exclusive content. For starters, you used to need an account to play the game, but you can now easily bypass this due to the efforts of DOA's passionate fanbase. After making a chibi-style avatar that looks like the ones found in Tekken 8's arcade quest mode and fleshing out your player profile, you can freely walk around this contained lobby area with either your controller or by using a mouse and keyboard. The NPCs here serve different purposes, and you can speak to this guy to play the tutorial or to enter trading mode for example. If you don't want to bother with that, you can use these icons at the top of the screen to access different materials, including the ability to map your buttons before a fight. Speaking of fights, when you're ready to throw down, you can use your mouse to click on the person you'd wish to battle. After they accept your battle request, you get taken to a menu where you can select your character, and after you both click battle, it begins. I don't know how long this would have taken back in the late 2000s, but playing this now on my laptop from 2019 gives me and my friend who I'm playing this with near instant loading times. Just like DOA on consoles, you spend very little time waiting and can quickly get into a match, which is excellent. As for the gameplay itself, it feels great. The game displays ping and other connection related information on the screen at all times, and the connection between my friend and I was flawless. We live a few hours away from each other and there was no lag or input delay, and it honestly felt the same as playing offline. I can't say this game has flawless netcode, because let's be honest, no game has netcode that is truly lag free, but from my experience, yeah it's pretty good. I've honestly had a more fulfilling online experience in DOA Online than something like Tekken 8 for example. Originally, certain characters and costumes used to require a purchase. As DOA Online was free to play, it made its money through microtransactions and other types of payments, but thanks again to the fans, this re-released version of the game removes all of that. It unfortunately doesn't run at my monitor's native 1920x1080 resolution, but it still looks nice enough. One thing I'll also mention is that Dead or Alive Online is also super easy to get up and running. Aside from an initial false positive from my antivirus when I first tried to run the game, DOA Online runs perfectly fine with no issues, I haven't had a single crash or freeze, and if you follow the instructions given by the Free Step Dodge DOA Online page, you'll be able to play this game offline or online with little to no issues. While it's a little bit jank and lacks the polish found from modern PC games, DOA Online is still a fun and easy way to play DOA 2 Ultimate with friends. 
I wish the game was supported for a lot longer and officially brought to other regions, but perhaps the game wasn't financially secure enough for Tecmo to keep investing in it, and I had no clue that this version of Dead or Alive even existed before I made this video, but I'm really glad that I tried it out. It was really fun going back to this classic fighting game and throwing out giant swings with Tino, and it speaks to the masterful game design of Dead or Alive that a game this old can still be very enjoyable by a scrub like me. DOA Online easily runs on potato PCs, and again, you don't need an account to play, so you can just jump right in and start battling. I'd also like to give a big shout out to Ponton for keeping the servers alive out of the kindness of his heart, as well as chatting with me about all things DOA. All in all, I had a lot of fun with this game and would like to keep playing it, because sending Kasumi flying through the stage will simply never get old. Thanks for watching, I hope you had fun, and I'll see you in the next one.